I think what's happened uh, in modern coaching today is that we've focusing a heck of a lot more now on facilitating for players and of course that means in many occasions potentially leaving the player to work out for themselves what they're trying to do and I have a, a fundamental issue with that slightly because if you work with an elite level player who already knows what they should be doing they can kind of get to the conclusions themselves I think the problem comes as a coach if you back off from intervening if you simply allow that player to try and work things out for themselves and you don't potentially guide them to the answer. What you have is a lot of uneducated players who get very frustrated and feel that they can't correct or help themselves. So I think we, we have to be very careful as coaches, international coaches of course, um, work with great players. Um, players who, uh, coaches rather, who work further down the food chain, they have a duty of care to ensure that the players that they're working with understand that coaching is a process and you can learn a process so this isn't so much about um, backing off as it were as a coach and just saying look I'm a facilitator I still think we need to be educators I still think we need to make sure that we explain the how to part the why part the what part of coaching and if we just um, say to a player you work it out for yourself it's up to you which I have heard a lot of very high level coaches saying now to some players, we, I think we're making a mistake. So coaching philosophy has still got to be intervening where appropriate. It's got to be guiding players as much as we can. It cannot simply be just let a player get on with it themselves and work out what's best for them. Uh, I think we do have to definitely make sure that a player gets it, understands it, has the um, tools at their disposal to make the best of themselves that they can possible. And it is for a coach to sometimes say to a player, that isn't working, here's a better solution. If you're going to give someone a headache, you need to clearly give them the solution or the aspirin as well. So it's not just about leaving them alone and praying and hoping they'll come to the right answer. There are a lot of coaches around today in international cricket, in particular, um, that I've heard talk about aggression or being aggressive. We saw at the World Cup, um, 2011 World Cup in the subcontinent, fantastic amount of pace bowling, but it, it wasn't so much aggressive pace bowling that won the day, it was clever pace bowling, smart pace bowling. Um, it was bowling that um, created pressure by a change of speed, uh, control of delivery, being able to put the ball in the right places. And although my coaching is all about how to bowl fast and straight and teaching bowlers that, you really do have to be able to control what you do. Just simply going out and being more aggressive, and I have heard some well-known coaches use that as their mantra. It isn't about that. It's about being controlled and being confident in your ability to deliver. If you can't go out and bowl your game plans, or you can't go out and control the ball and, and be able to put the ball where you need to, a head coach can have the best game plans on the planet but he, it's not going to work you know he's not going to be able to win games through his bowling attack if the bowling attack can't put the ball where they need to we go back to the 1980s for example the west indies probably had the best four five six bowlers a uh, bowling attack of all time they were aggressive but not in a sort of cheerleader rah 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 aggressive false way they were aggressive because they knew they were bloody good you know they were a really strong outfit and when you're confident in your talent and your ability, I think then you can be aggressive by nature, by default. So for coaches just to focus on aggression, it means different things to, to different people. Some people get aggressive verbally, some people get aggressive mentally, and they can lose their shape and control. So I would rather say, you know, get to grips with your technical aspect, understand the process-based learning and what you do, then you'll be confident and you can go out and be as positive as you like. But just being aggressive for the sake of it doesn't make you a great cricketer, I'm afraid. I want to focus a little bit on the technical aspect of fast bowling because most coaches I come across, even those who profess to specialise in fast bowling coaching, 
say fast bowling is an art. Well, actually, it's an art and a science, and I'm thinking it's a bit more scientific than arty. You know, the arty part of fast bowling has always been wrist positions and you know when to bowl what ball at what time to what player and how to do this. But I think it's more about the technical aspect of bowling actions these days, and that a lot of coaches shy away from the technical aspect because they feel that it's changing a player. When it comes to batting and we talk about technique, that's coaching, but when it's fast bowling it seems to be thought of as change and it doesn't have to be change at all, it's, it's just understanding. Uh, and if a, a fast bowling coach doesn't understand the technical aspect of his um, skill, if you like, the, the, the coaching aspect of his skill, then how is he ever going to impart that knowledge to others? If you were a great fast bowler, well done, you know, you had that talent. Someone at some stage must have taught you how to bowl fast. If not, it was just a God-given natural ability, but that doesn't mean that everyone has that. And You sometimes have to take a player that's raw and develop them into something that's far better. And that comes from the technical aspect, and that is all about process-based learning. As humans, we learn from processes when we learn to drive a car, for example. Um, we didn't know how to, we're not natural car drivers, we learn that process and if you break fast bowling down into a process, the great news is it can be learned. But you as a coach have to understand what those processes are and if you don't understand that you can't help others to understand that. So fast bowling coaches have to be highly educated, they really do have to understand the biomechanics of it without swallowing a biomechanics dictionary and getting very boring about it. You have to be able to understand human movement and apply it to the action. You can't just shoehorn it in from another sport. You have to be able to cross it over so it's relevant. And I think above all, you have to make it interesting and fun. I hear a lot of coaches say that as well. Cricket has to be fun. Of course it does. But do you know what? It's re really good fun when you win, and it's really good fun when you're good. And processes and understanding processes make you good and help you to win. So ultimately, for me, pace bowling coaching is about teaching processes, understanding the technical aspect of it. You know, of course you have to be able to do the arty part, but if you don't get, have a good process in the first place, you know, you're, you're trying to polish something that doesn't shine very well. So I would always go and look at the technical aspect first, try and help a bowler to understand it, and then help them improve as much as they can. There's probably a big prevalence today for um, players to lean on a coach um, by that I mean if they don't do well it's probably the coach's fault certainly a lot of media attention that you get if a side fails they seem to blame the coaches if a team does well of course it's all about the player let me just say here that cricket is all about the player the coach is purely there to give information and to get the players to utilize that information in the best way possible. There's a saying that knowledge is power. I don't really agree with that. I think it's the use of knowledge that is power. It's no good having the knowledge if you never use it. But someone's got to give you that knowledge in the first place. And the skill of a good coach is giving as much information as possible. Um, I hear parents sometimes of young players say that such and such a, a kid is overcoached or this player's you know, had too much coaching. I don't think that's fair at all. Um, I don't think you can give enough good information if you know your stuff. So overcoaching is the wrong word. I think the wrong coaching is probably what people mean. And one piece of uh, very average and bad advice can adversely affect any player. So um, when a player relies on a coach, what they should do is they should rely on themselves to find out the information. There's plenty of it out there. If you want to learn how to hit a ball further and harder, or bowl faster, or throw the ball better, go and find that out. You know, Ask a coach, they should be able to help you. If it goes wrong, don't blame the coach, it's your career. But all I would say is that uh, a coach's job is really to educate, and uh, if we cease to educate, we stop coaching.